Hi, I'm Aaron, and welcome to the Slim, Fitty, and Biggie Committee podcast, where me and my best friends, Danny and Matt, take a deep dive into hip hop, the genre that has formed an integral part of our lives. Please like, subscribe, and follow us on Instagram at the underscore Slim Fitty Biggie Committee and stay tuned for any upcoming podcast news. Coming up on today's show, I caught up with one of the up-and-coming hip-hop artists, Amelia Cole, who just dropped her monster debut album, Classy Bougie Ratchet Volume 1, with 30 tracks. She has also had a really interesting journey in her hip-hop career, and it was great to speak to her about her path and how she creates music, which includes her WAP freestyle. But without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome to the Slim Fitty and Biggie Committee podcast. We're here with Amelia Cole. Uh, she's uh, a US-based rapper, so she's definitely up and coming, recently released uh an album, 30 track album called Classy Bougie Ratchet Volume 1. It's her EP, so definitely check it out. So she was good enough to, to join us here. So Amelia, how are you going today? Hey, I'm doing great. Awesome. Well, I thought we might start with, you know, your your story, your journey, because getting into hip hop is not the easiest journey. It obviously takes some time, it takes some some work. So you grew up in Portland. Tell me about your childhood. What were you doing when you were growing up and, and when you were, were deciding on coming into hip hop? Well, music is something that I've always, you know, was interested in. I love music. Like my mom, she used to be an artist herself as well. So she was a big influence on me. She used to always go to the studio and stuff like that. And... I don't know, just something always deep down inside always told me that you got it in you, like, this is your dream. I don't know, something, it was just always a calling for me, you know? So as I got older, um, I had moved to California and was trying to pursue a modeling career, but, you know, modeling, it didn't work out for me. So I was just like, and then somehow I moved to Miami and I just came out here on a vacation and I was like around all these people that's in the music industry. And it like really inspired me to go after my, you know, my talent and my dreams. I guess one thing led to another. I just saw there was a bunch of opportunity out here. And um, yeah, I also started doing music videos first as being like a video vixen, you know, just to get my face out there, just to so I could meet some of these rappers and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Trying to be on the level like them, I guess. And then, um, yeah, I just eventually, you know, was slowly doing my music stuff on the side. You know, I'm just going full strong with that right now. You're, you're full into it. So tell me about, as you were a kid, so when were you introduced to hip hop? How did that, when did it become like, okay, I know what this is now? Oh, when I was a kid? Um, when I was probably about, I could say seven, 16, 17, I made me a song. And then <laughs> I made it, I recorded it on my um, computer and I like let a lot of list people listen to it. And then I got good feedback from it. And then from then I was like, I got something. So yeah, I was probably about like 15, 16, 17, but it always been around. Cause probably when I was about 13, 14, I was like in a little girl group, me, my sister and this other girl that was around the neighborhood. We was trying to like be like Destiny's Child. <laughs> <laughs> seriously <laughs> and we was like really trying to do it you know it was always in me but really it's all about your support system like that you can never give up you just got to keep going strong period does your sister still pursue music or is that just being yourself nah, she that was just a little phase she went through but i still pursue it it takes a lot of hard work and i guess she didn't want to put in all that work she still like makes songs for fun but She's not trying to take it serious. She's still like camera shy and stuff like that. Yeah, you gotta be ready for a little bit of spotlight. You gotta be ready to put yourself out there. You gotta be willing to do the the hard yards. Did right. you find that your family was really supportive when you decided? Once they saw that I was really taking it serious, they started supporting me more, telling people to listen to my music and yeah, stuff like that. Try to get it to radio stations and 
so forth and so forth. But yeah, they support me 100% now. They see I'm not playing. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, if anyone follows you on Instagram, you can see that you're always doing new stuff, always releasing new things. Um, for you, who are your influences? You know, hip hop is one of those ones where it's filled with different artists, but you talked about Destiny's Child early. Who else were you influenced by? Who else were you like, okay, this is kind of what I want to emulate? Well, um, Beyonce was always one of my biggest influencers. But when Nicki Minaj came on the scene, she gave me hope. Like, I was like, oh, she's like really it. Like, I really want to be like her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, that's how, that's what it was. I just thought she was just so lit. And she brought um, another, she, I basically, she like, made my alter ego grow a little bit, Amelia Cole, and her rapping skills, all that. Yeah, she helped me out a lot. So did you go back and study her work? Yes, I did. But I also, you know, mixed it with my feel, like who I am, you know? So I just, I didn't really take much from her, but style and confidence, I basically took her confidence. Awesome. Just like I got the confidence from Beyonce too. You always got to take that that part of it, whatever it is that you get. You always it's gotta, the confidence. You know, yeah, I took that from them. You got to have that confidence. Period. In terms of for you being a female artist, it is a male dominated industry. Like I've, I've spoken to a few different people on the podcast about you know the the growth of women in hip hop. How do you see that evolution? I think now we're moving into a time where female hip hop is really being celebrated and supported. How do you see that change throughout kind of hip hop culture? I see that um, now versus then, females are starting to come together and really work together. Like it's not all about, you know, it's not, it's, they're not trying to just be themselves anymore. Like, you know, back then it seemed like they was really selfish with the fame. Like nowadays it's like, they're willing to like, hold a hand like help the next person up i see that a lot a lot of women are coming together you know making themselves be known we're standing up for ourselves eventually you know because back then it was just all male dominated now it's like you see a lot of females coming out too and so what do you attribute that change to do you think it's more women supporting each other do you think it's you know also finally there is now i think it's just the change of the generation Cause it's another generation now so we have the internet and stuff like that and more people are it's easier access to get to the other person now i don't know like i'm just saying <laughs> that's what it seemed like the internet changed a lot <laughs> you know what i'm saying like we're in 2020 now it's a whole new generation so the, i guess you could say the internet brought these artists together and now people are easier inspired now because it's like you could basically touch that other person now and it also gives, you know, independent artists a voice. So you don't exactly. have to be signed to a record label. You can literally go with right. your own time. You can release your own stuff all independent and have right. control of your brand. So, um, yeah, I think that coming into hip hop now is really exciting because you see a lot of people who potentially were excluded and now mm -hmm. coming into the frame and dropping new music. I mean, you're the perfect example. 30 track EP is not. Hurdle. Yeah, I had to realize that you sometimes, sometimes you just will have to start by doing it just yourself. I I mean, I done came across a couple deals and I never took them, but I never really understood the music industry until I just, you know, did a project on my own and just put it out there. You know, you never know, you never get what the response you're going to get, period. So what made you knock those deals back? I'm looking for a big major deal. And those are just like, independent record label deals and stuff like that and plus they weren't talking enough money so yeah <laughs> i need that check because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> man whatever you're trying to do i probably could do it too but i'm just saying i need a check check to do what i really trying to do like you know and so how do you find the challenge of being an artist and then obviously you don't get paid until your music has exposure or your art has exposure how do you find the challenge of, or how did you find the challenge of making sure you've got enough money to survive while also putting enough time to, to your art? 
that's why I um developed a small team up underneath me. You know, I got people that support me, like help me out with my records, help me out with my visuals and stuff. Yeah. I just created all this this year. You know what I'm what saying? Like, like that? What is you know, it depends on who you are. If you find some people that believe in you, may don't have to, uh -oh. you know, put out as much money what or happened? whatever. Yeah, <laughs> it's just an investment. You got to yeah, invest man. in yourself, period. It's an investment. So everything that I'm doing now is an investment. I'm not getting much back, but I do get paid shows and um, features and stuff like that. It's not much, but it's worth it. I mean, it's going to pay off in the end. I'm pretty sure it is because <laughs> I'm going to make sure it does. When you first made your move to LA, you wanted to do modeling. How did you find that experience? What were the challenges there? Um, I wanted to do high, like high fashion because I was always tall. I'm like five seven, five eight. But I guess I just wasn't what they were looking for, and I just gave up on that real quick. And then um, I ran into this guy who was a rapper, and he put me and my sister in the studio. We did a few tracks, and then um, yeah, it's a long story. Music just has been on, in and out of my life, like forever, basically. But yeah, the um, I found it challenging because yeah, like I said, I, I wasn't, I don't think I was what they were looking for. Do you think that was purely because they, it just wasn't the look, you were focused on other things? Or do you think that, you know, realistically was a sign that you were supposed to go into music anyway? Um, I guess what happened was when I did start taking pictures, I, they always asked me uh, to build, work on my portfolio. So when I started working on that, I fell into the urban world. My picture is looking more urban, I guess. You know what that means. Like, it was, yeah, they, they didn't want that look. They wanted more high fashion looks. So what I should have been doing is getting more high fashion clothes instead of looking like, you know, an urban girl, basically. Well, I think the change in hip hop is also moving the change in the modeling world as well to have... it changed it did change you're right now it's different so would you ever consider going back to to potentially modeling hell yeah anyone who's listening pay attention amelia cole is open to getting back into modeling yes i just got this body done so yes i'm looking right now period <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> so you you're in LA it's it's tough it's challenging you realize that the look that you have is not what they're selling at the time how do you get to a point where you're like all right I'm I'm cutting it I'm going to Miami oh um, well what happened was I had just moved into my place I was probably there for like six months and then I had got robbed someone broke into my apartment and they basically stole my stash. They stole all my electronics, flat screen TV, cell phones, laptops, everything. And then I just felt like I wasn't safe out there anymore. And then I had some friends saying, we're going to Miami. Um, we're going out here for a vacation. You should come with us. It was supposed to be just for like two weeks, I guess. We were on vacation for two weeks. And I was like, man, it's so lit out here. I like it. It's so much potential. I don't want to go back home, <laughs> basically. Oh, I bet. And so, because your family right now, are they still in Portland? I have family in Portland, and I also have family in California, like LA area, outside of LA. And so, do you find the time to go back and visit them, or do they come visit you? How do you find that that balance, obviously, um, being away from them? They come either visit me, or I come visit them. I do it like every other, probably, sometimes I'll do it a couple times a year, or like every other year. Not every other year, but every summer or something like that. Yeah, depends on your schedule. And now it looks like it's right. getting busier and busier. Right, yeah. They're like, come out here now. We're doing this. We're doing that. I'm like, oh, I can't do it. I got stuff, you know, I got yeah. stuff to do. <laughs> it's weird because you think once you drop your, your album, you're like got free time for a while. But in reality, that's when you get busier. Exactly, yeah. And so I could, obviously we could, we've heard the kids in the background how old are the kids? Do they listen to your music? <laughs> yes. I have a son that just turned nine and I have a son that's one years old. And no, they do not listen to my music, but they heard some of my songs before, the appropriate songs. <laughs> that That is the challenge. Like, I'm a huge hip hop fan. So when I have kids, I don't have any kids right now, but when I have kids, I'm always in the back of my mind, I'm like, 
oh, I've got to figure out some clean music because I can't play the hip hop that I like in front of them. It's right. just part of the part of the journey. Yeah, that's true. Just got to make sure that they don't listen to them songs. Yeah, maybe some but, good um, Because I remember growing up, my mom used to be like, yeah, she used to make sure that we would, didn't listen to inappropriate music. But once we got old enough to understand the song, she was okay with that. But yeah, I just, you know, I don't let them listen to my music. Only the appropriate songs. Yeah, and do you feel like that they have a musical or creative touch in them? Obviously, you know, following after your footsteps? They do. They do. Both of them. The little one, he already be singing. And the big one, my son, he be singing as well. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so their dad is also an artist. Well, he used to be an artist. He's a vocal coach now. And he has a song on, I mean, a whole album on iTunes. And so did, have you guys ever collabed? We have collabed on a couple songs that are not out. But he does backgrounds and stuff for me, like on my music. If, would he, if you didn't become a hip hop artist, what do you think you would have done? Honestly, I don't know. Because growing up, I had struggled with what did I wanted to become when I get older, period. So if I wasn't doing music or living my dreams, I wouldn't know what I would be doing. I wouldn't, honestly. In terms of school, you talk about, you know, not knowing what you wanted to do when you grow up. How did you find that at school, obviously, with your friends, that everyone at school, you know, you meet people and they're like, I want to be this or I want to be that. How did you find managing that side of it where you just weren't 100% sure? It was so hard because I used to tell my teacher, I don't know what I want to be. I ain't really know nothing. I always told her I want to be a model. <laughs> I used to like, I want to be a model. <laughs> I didn't want to be no artist or nothing at the time. But deep down inside, I really did want to be an artist. But I was just shy. I was really shy growing up. But always was like the hot girl though, period. But yeah, I don't know. I just, yeah, I used to just tell her. She was like, you can't be no, she used to always tell me, you can't be no artist. I mean, not no artist. You can't be no model. You need a real job. I used to be like, I don't know. I just want to be a model. You know, it feels like anything creative in the academic world is almost not a real job. Right, right, exactly. Because you got to make it happen. Definitely. Always. If you don't back yourself in, then nobody else will. How did you get over that shyness? um how did I get over it I don't know honestly once you start associating yourself with certain people and stuff you know being around them seeing how they act and stuff and seeing their confidence and you see how their confidence are I eventually got over it I think when I grew up and realized who I was that's when I got over it when I started to know who who I was you know because it took me a while to know who I was <laughs> I felt like I went through an identity crisis when I was like 20. Yeah, like when I was 19, turning 20 or something like that, because I didn't know. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know what I wanted to be. I didn't know anything. I was just basically lost, basically. And so what advice were you getting from people around you at that age? They just used to always saw that I was a hustler, period. They used to be like, you a star, you a star. They, no one didn't realize what I was battling around that time because they saw a different person. And so how did you let it out? Once you start pretending, once you put on a show, it's hard to... I think once I moved to Miami and I started getting hosting gigs and started being in music videos and started, people started coming up to me, oh, you that girl from the such and such video. Once I started experiencing that type of stuff, that's what boosted my confidence up, really, for real. And it just, you know, broke me out of my little shell. Once I started getting that type of exposure and the response from people. So how did you get into those music videos? Because moving to Miami you're essentially unknown how did you get to a point where they're like all right you know get me in you, you did music videos with dj khaled chris brown flow rider i used to uh go to the clubs a lot i used to go out a lot and they used to see my face hey and then you know miami is small out here everybody know everybody and then once they start seeing my face hey we need you for the uh ace hood and french montana music video and then you start meeting more people like at different video shoots and you start networking. Hey, I'm gonna need you for this other video over here. That's how it happened. It was like that. And then you start going to all these different video shoots, seeing the same people. 
it's eventually, you know, that's how I got around. And then I had babies and that kind of slowed me down too. What did you do to like start meeting people? Did you just go up to them, speak to them? Or was it just like you were doing good work and they came up to you? How did that networking side of it? Oh, how did I get around them? Um, I would hang out with like, try to be friends with like pretty popping girls and then be around them. And then they'll be around the people in the music industries. And then they'll um, be like, oh, I need you for this shoot. Oh, I need you for that. You know, it was like something like that. That's how it happened. And it once, yeah, that's how, I, yeah, I meet all the pretty girls in the club. Girls that used to host parties and eventually I got on too. Awesome. And so when you host parties, did you, is that where you had the opportunity to show your music or what were you actually, you know, doing? Um, I was host hosting parties? parties as a model. I was doing like hosting, a lot of hosting in the beginning as a model. Like, yeah, that's what I was doing in the beginning. But now when I host, of course they play my music yeah. all the time. That's why I'm getting booked because they know I'm an artist now, not a model. I, but you can do both. You said that, you know, you had kids and that stopped the, the kind of flow in terms of your career for, for a period of time. How did you find, number one, getting back into it and kind of the influence change once you have kids? So uh, what happened was I had my first baby. I was like really popping at the time too. And then I just lost it. I somehow got dragged away from the industry and I basically had to start all over. I had to revamp myself. And that's when I changed my name to Amelia Cole, I believe. I had to come up with a whole new identity, how I'm going how I'm going to be, how I'm going to act, how this and that and third. And then, yep, that's what happened. How did you get back into it? Obviously, after a break, you know, number one, it takes a lot of the burden in terms of a relationship, in terms of now you have a child who is, you can't take care of themselves. How did you get back? So um, what made me get back into it is I was always motivated. Always motivated to go because I'm a go getter. Like I'm a hustler. I like to hustle really hard. So I just never gave up hope, basically. And I'm not the type of person just gonna turn my back away because I've been doing this for a while. And people still be like, "Oh, you're still going on. I see you're still getting it. That's good. That's what's up." And so, if you had a message for anyone who takes a break, regardless of whether it's for for kids or anything else in their life that is throws up a challenge, what would your advice be? Um, I mean, if it's something they really want to do and it's their dream, they should never give up on it and just always, you know, keep it in the back of their mind that they need to still complete whatever their dream is. They know if it's for them, like if it's their calling, they're not going to never give up. Now, moving into this album that you've released, 30 tracks, what made you go for a 30 track EP rather than, you know, the classic anywhere between 8 to 15 is generally where they sit. What made you go for a, for a really big one of 30 tracks? The reason why I came out with 30 tracks because I've been sitting on like these songs, you know, and I just want people to know a feel of who I am and what type of music I like to do. And that was the type of music that I had already. So I was like, I'm just going to drop all this and then start fresh. So yeah, those are songs I've just been sitting on. I've been wanting to release, but couldn't because of timing and focus, you know, and all that stuff. F and I'm putting all these out. <laughs> it was more songs than that. Some of them, you know, but yeah. Because one of the tracks that I noticed and one of them that kind of stood out to me was the track Oprah. Talk to me about your, your idea and kind of the, the, the story behind it because it's a bit different to a lot of the other tracks that you have as well. So yeah, Oprah is my single. Um, the reason why I wrote about Oprah is just basically talking about woman empowerment, uh, coming together and stuff like that. I want to be like Oprah. I use it as a metaphor. I'm Oprah. You get a bottle, you get a bottle, everybody get a bottle. Uh -oh. And um, it's basically saying, um, sticking up for the boss bitches, <laughs> the boss girls. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I want to be like Oprah. <laughs> and so taking that, mentality to your life how do you feel that because we spoke about collab collabing with artists at the beginning you said that the change in hip-hop especially female hip-hop has been that female artists are now working together rather than beefing I think you see throughout the hip-hop history there's a lot of beef they like to pit female artists against female artists in general how do you find the the process for collabing with different artists 
Well, a lot of these girls that live out here in Miami, I'm friends with them too. So, hey girl, let's do a track together. All right, let's do it. And we go from there. I do tracks with like females that I know. I don't do them with females I don't know. I gotta know them. How do you stay in that zone where you're like, I want this. And regardless of what challenges you have, you're gonna go get it. You basically gotta put your mind in a tunnel vision. Like you have to see that tunnel and just be on that tunnel vision. If you get thrown off and don't have that focus, you can lose your vision, period. So once you're in that tunnel vision, you know what you got to do. And you just got to find yourself in an area where you're not really bothered by much. Like you got to find a way to how to balance out everything. And once you figure that out, that's how you go into tunnel vision. Because people ask me that all the time. Like, how do you just do it? How do you just do it and make this and make that happen. I was like, your mind gotta be there. Your mind has to be there. Your mind has to be there. This person can't make your mind there. That person can't either. You have to make your mind there. You gotta take your mind to that place. And it's it's tough, it's tough. I ain't gonna lie, that's, that's, that's tough. Cause I deal with a lot. I'm pretty sure everybody did. <laughs> what surprised you in your journey? What's something that, you know, you were like, I'm expecting this, but got something completely different? Uh, there's a lot of stuff I wouldn't, I mean, I didn't expect. I didn't expect for the industry to be like how it is. Like, it's really up to you to make, to make it work. You can make it happen. I didn't think it was that easy to actually put some songs together and put it out there yourself. Now, that really, like, kind of messed my head up a little bit. Because I could have been did something like that and I didn't do it. <laughs> so that really surprised me. So you, you were surprised by how easy it was to kind of just do your own thing and not have to worry about getting into the quagmire of like, you know, big record labels of like, you know, people trying to influence your music. I was surprised about that I could do it myself versus waiting on somebody else to basically hold my hand and walk me through it. And doing it yourself, how did you get the beats that you got? You know, beat selection is one of those challenges for every artist that you've got to get, number one, a beat that you like, and number two, be, have access to certain beats as well. How did you find getting beats? Um, some of those beats I, you know, did mixtape songs, so I recorded over other people's beats. And then some of those beats I got from Twitter, like I put out a Twitter blast and just say, send me beats to my email, you know what I'm saying? I... Oh, I made like probably two or three beats that was on that album. Oh, nice. So, yeah. Yeah. How did you find making beats? How was that process? Pretty, I just, I made the beats out of using loops. So I made it on my computer. There was already loops there. I just put it together and made the beat. Well, you are seeing a lot of artists now turn into produce their own music as well. So you've got artists like Royster Five Nine who produced his own music. And then you've got artists like, Black Milk, who obviously produces as well as rap. So that is definitely an avenue that you can explore. I noticed as well, you did a remix of WAP as well. What did you think of that track when it came out? What was your opinion on it? Just so as opinion. soon as I heard it, I thought that song was so lit. I was like, oh, I got to do the remix to this. I have to. And then you obviously did. And to be honest, it sounds really good. You did a fantastic job on, on the remix. Did you feel, did you feel that the release of WAP was kind of the a new era. It kind of was like, you know what, this is now hip hop where we have strong females. We have females who are really empowered with their sexuality and not scared to express it. How did you right. find and that I drop? love expressing it. Like, I don't know why I just like making music about, you know, expression sexuality. <laughs> That was so my lane. So I was just like, I'm doing this song. I'm about to kill this shit. <laughs> I'm about to do it. Fuck it. I don't know. I just really liked it. I, I, I fuck with Cardi B too. I like her. She's a lit artist. I seen where she came from. And so now she's so super lit. And so for you, it, it obviously tracks like this and for other female artists and for any artists out there, it gives them the license to kind of talk about their sexuality. We see male artists from the time the beginning of hip hop to now have been talking about their own sexuality and sex. And now we're seeing finally females are now given the license and have taken the opportunity to speak about their own sexuality. How do you think that will influence hip hop moving forward? It was always there, but it just never really went viral. 
like people always talked about their sexuality and all that and it just really because little Kim used to talk about that type of stuff back in her time but now it's just like really going viral and people are accepting it more that's what I think of it whenever I look at the balance for any hip-hop artist I feel like it's it's really tough because you don't have the same structure of a nine to five you have to manage kind of as you go how do you balance that you know, you just got to accept it. <laughs> just got to deal with it. And for the most part, how do you find, you know, the, because I mean, your nine-year-old goes to school now. So how do you find, you know, obviously the, the drop off and then do you find that the, you have the support in your life to make that easier for you? Well, right now they're, he's in homeschool. So I just wake him up like eight o'clock in the morning, you know, tell him to brush his teeth, wash his face and get ready for school. He has his school right in his room. So yeah, just for now. But uh, before, how was it? It was pretty tough because you got to get up early in the morning and then drop them off and then pick them up. That's just like a real heavy toll on, you know, any parent. Yeah. And so how do you fit in recording sessions around that? Do you do that during the day or do you have to do that, you know, that balance line? Um, for recording sessions, I normally do them at night. So it's easier to do it that way. Cause then I could just, you know, drop the kids off to a babysitter and then go ahead and record, knock it out. And then, yeah, they have school in the morning, get ready for school that, you know. It's, it's long hours, but you know, as we, as we said before, you've got to hustle to make your dream work. And that's what clearly they're doing. So for you moving forward, what's your what's your next plan? You were saying that your plan is to explore what you're working on now in terms of new flows and all that kind of stuff. Do you have an idea of what your next album will be about? More party music, more hype music, more uh, hustling music, go getting music, that type of music. Just stuff that gets you up and about and gets you ready to go. Yeah. Motivation music, pretty much. And who do you listen to right now to motivate you? I listen to, like, a little bit of everybody. I listen to, uh, I like Light Skin Keisha. I like Summer Walker. I like Cardi B. I like Megan Thee Stallion, of course. She real dope, hot. Um, I listen to Nicki Minaj. But, like, I listen to the City Girls, too, Doja Cat. Queen Nigel. I listen to pretty much everybody, whoever's popping, period. <laughs> Whatever they playing, that's what I listen to. And so how do you see the, the evolution of hip hop? Because we came from an era of boom bap being the sound that everybody uses. Now we've got the trap with the hi hats and it's a completely different sound. How do you ha how do you view that transition from boom bap to more of a trap vibe? Um, how do I view it, you said? I like it. I like the direction it's heading in because I feel like it was more me, like, well, female wise, you know, talking about them. I feel like I could relate more to what they're playing now. Is it more with just the vibe or is it more like you find it easier to get into a trappy beat versus a boom bap beat? It's a more of a vibe now. I don't know. I just, I'm tuned into myself. So once you're tuned in, like you really could see that see what's really going on around you and you could it's easier for you to adapt to it and so for you if you could work with any artist do you have like a you know i'll know I'm, i made it when i work with this artist do you have like a an idea of who that would be um i would know i have made it once i get like a collaboration with a real big artist yeah like someone like megan Thee stallion or somebody that would be lit. If I could do a song with her, that would be awesome. Doja Cat or who else? Nicki Minaj, of course. But, like, once I, like, really do a song with an A-lister, you know what I'm saying? Like, who's hottest in the game, that's how I know I'm, I made it, period. I think that, you know, the good thing is that with social media the way it is and with hip-hop the way it is, there are lots of A-listers. It's not that era of just... Biggie and Tupac, it's the era of you have hundreds of artists that are really big and really popular. So that's definitely right. an, yeah. an option for you. So for you right now, what do you see as your challenge moving forward? What's 
what's going to be the challenge for you to number one drop the new a new album to get out there keep getting exposed what's the what's your challenge that you probably need to overcome my challenge is right now is find a producer that's willing to work with me like i have producers that i worked with in the past but i need someone that just believe in my dream and just like i want to you know, just focus on you. Let me do all your work pretty much and have a relationship with that one person. I mean, not that one producer, but, you know, for this project that I'm working on, I need a real lit producer who's willing to just, you know, but everyone, they want to work with me, but everyone wants a lot of this. I know people got to get paid, you know what I'm saying? But just like how I find everybody else, I need to find that producer that's like that. Yeah, so obviously the challenge is producers, like especially big names right now, they obviously want to get, right. get paid. So, And producers, for anyone who doesn't know, they sit in a studio with you, they help you, they structure a song. They're not just a beat maker. They don't just give the beat, they actually run the show. So they help you make a hook, they help you write the bars, flows, all that kind of stuff. So it's a real collaboration and that's where you see the importance of producers. How do you find that right. process by yourself like do you have people in the studio who are like all right Amelia this is what you need to do this is how it sounds how do you find that process right now well right as of now I record songs on my own or I go to the studio that I gotta pay his name is Mark Insane Sounds he's lit as fuck like he's really dope but he he just tax <laughs> yeah so right now I'm just yeah looking for that right producer who just want to work with me and who do you bring to your recording sessions with you this guy named Sway that I work with, he's a manager. Well, he's like my manager. He's my partner, of course. So, yeah. How do you find his feedback? Does he give you like, all right, this is what you need to do. This is what I think. How do you find his feedback for you? I tell him to like check something out and let if he likes it. And majority of the time he always likes it, but he's never wrong. I always like his feedback on whatever I do. And now that you're bigger on social media, obviously you're you're posting, you're promoting a few different things, you know, hair, lingerie, all that kind of stuff. How do you find the interaction with fans on social media? Um, how do I find the interaction with them? I just got to post and eventually they catch on and keep on, you know, watching my feed and my stories and stuff. I just, I just post more interesting content and that's how I get their attention. That's what I learned to realize because I was like a couple years ago, well, a year ago, I was just like, what am I doing wrong? Because, you know, I just had a baby and stuff like that. And I was going through postpartum and I was like trying to get the groove back. And I was just thinking like, what the heck am I doing wrong? And it's all about the content that you post. And so what what were you posting before versus what are you posting now? I don't know what I was posting. (laughs) 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 Probably just some regular, not posting important stuff, but I need to be posting. And so now you've gotten into the group. Do you have a schedule or do you more like whatever I'm feeling is when I'll post? Yeah, whatever I'm feeling is when I post or whenever I have like a project I'm about to drop or something, that's when I'll post. Yeah, it's one of the challenging things. No one tells you before you, everyone, you know, when I started this podcast, everyone thinks about the recording, but no one thinks about the promotion. And the promotion is the hardest part. It's the... The, the part that's not sexy at all because it's not the actual work. You're not working on your passion. You're just promoting it. So it's it's the challenge of, of doing both that most people struggle with. Right. It is the promoting. The promoting is really hard. You got to go ham with the promoting. And it's that's the ugly part about it. <laughs> you got to spend more money promoting. Yeah, it's all you spend money, but you don't make enough money back yet. And hopefully for everyone... It's a matter of time. And I think that for yourself, it will be a matter of time. In terms of how did you get into, into the music side of things? Because we, we kind of touched on, you know, you, you always had it in you, but what made you sit down and go, I'm going to do it and I'm going to record my first track? Um, my first track, my very first track, my very first track was recorded by myself pretty much. Um, but my very first professional track was, oh yeah, okay, um, yeah, when I came across my very first, what was it, I'm trying to think, okay, yeah, 
I don't know. I always deep down inside, I always knew that I was gonna take it serious one day. But for some reason, 2020 like really woke me up. I'm like, I came to a something, I came to realize that I'm either gonna do this shit or just leave it alone. So when it 2020 came around, a lot of people had a lot of times on their hands to be thinking about a lot of stuff. So I was just like, man, I am not giving up on my dreams. I don't care how old I get. I'm not giving up. I got to keep on doing this. So it was like, I was down to like my last strike in my head. I was just like, man, just put this album together to see their response. And if it's meant to be that something good's going to come out of it, period. And I've been getting a lot of good feedback and a good a lot of acknowledgement and all that type of stuff. So yeah, I guess it was 2020 made me just realize that I gotta just do it. You know, last 2019 I had a baby and I was like really giving up on a lot of stuff because that postpartum is no joke. Have your mind going crazy. And then yeah. But for my first song, like you said, um, my first song was just some stuff I was just playing around with. I wasn't really serious about it. But this album made made me really wake up like I'm really serious, like I'm not playing no more, period. Yeah, for sure. And I think you can hear that in the the later tracks that you release, the ones that are closer to where you are now. You can see the right. development in terms of what you're doing as an art. You've obviously got some where you just started that you're throwing out and that's part of the journey. So it's interesting to listen to the album and kind of pick up on the tracks that seem to be from your older self, like a younger you versus now you make a conscious decision, you're driven, you're ready to go, you're actually hustling and, and making it work. And speaking of 2020, how is it with coronavirus? How is it, you know, it's hard, you can't do as many performances, you can't do as many gigs, there's not as many people around. How are you managing the change in the, the hip hop landscape because of coronavirus? I guess when the coronavirus wasn't here, I was just really distracted with a lot of things that was around me and stuff. My focus was not right. I was hanging around the wrong people and stuff like that. So, so since now that this coronavirus came, I stopped hanging around with, you know, toxic people. I cleared up my energy and just been doing like a lot of praying and stuff like that. And, um, I don't know. It's just like a light bulb or something just went off of my head and just made me wake up. Like, I don't know what is, what was that about? I don't know if it's timing or it's supposed to happen, but something just made me wake up. It just really felt like a light bulb, like just went off out of nowhere. I don't know, like something wasn't right. And then something just screwed right. And everything's working now. <laughs> it's trying to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Was there a moment or was there like you woke up and you're like, I'm ready to go? Honestly, it was not even no moment. I know I was just in the house and I just looking at my laptop, looking at all these songs that I have and that people have not heard. And I was just like, I'm sitting on something. Let me just release this. That's it. <laughs> and it, it went on from there. I guess me dropping that album was like the light bulb that went off. Yeah, I think that once you have something out there, it's like, now I've got to do it, especially because you're essentially saying to everybody, this is what I'm going to do. And I, I started to see something as I was like going along with the flow, like I started to see something and I was like, oh, this is, this is how they do it. I'm starting to get the formula down. You know what I'm saying? Like of how to really do this shit. Like for real, I start to see it. I'm like, wow, I could really do this. I just need that producer. Do you, if you, if you could get any producer, who would you get? I don't really know too many hot producers, but from what I hear of, uh, London on the track is a pretty dope producer. I like what he did to uh, Summer Walker's album. I wouldn't mind working with him because he seemed like he know what he's doing. His music is on point. Who else I would like to work with? Um, DJ Mustard. He seemed like he's a hot producer. I like his music. He lit. Who else is a dope for me? I think those two for now, because I don't really know too many by their names. <laughs> hey, if if you're a dope producer and you want to get in touch with Amelia Cole, hit her up because uh, she's ready to go. She's she's excited. If you got some beats as well, hit her up. And you know, as we said, the hardest part is getting getting the right beats and getting the right sound, and you're going for a real trappy vibe at the moment. So 
that seems to work for you because you're definitely finding your sound. How do you find the the process of writing hooks? Because I have spoken to a few different artists and when you get into hip hop to begin with, everyone focuses on bars. But the challenge is to write a catchy song so that it stays in people's minds. How do you work on doing your hooks? I like hooks. I don't know. I'm a hook person, more of a verse person. So uh, I don't know. I just hear for certain melodies in the beat. And it just, when I come up with the song, I don't know how I come up with it. It just plays in my head. And then I try to sing it with the beat. And that's how I come up with my hooks. And do you go for hooks first or do you go for your verse first? I go for hooks first. And is that how you find kind of what you're going to rap about through the hook? Or do you have a, an idea beforehand? I have an idea beforehand. I get like, I find a subject of what I want to write about. And then I go about that. That's how I go from there. And how do you find that inspiration? Is it just you walk around the house, you day to day stuff? Or do you like, hey, I could just see one word. <laughs> And I could just write about that one word and just go from there. Just find that one word, anything. I could see the word off of the beat, off the beat that I chose. If I see whatever they name the beat, I'll, I'll make the song out of that, the name of the beat, you get it? And so do you write pen and paper or do you write on your phone? How do you write your lyrics? I write on my phone. I like to use my notepad. What's your next step? So we've, we've spoken about you want to release a new album. What else are you working on? Do you have any other projects that you're working on? I know that you're really busy with a few other collabs. Like, as we said, you're, you've got lingerie, you're doing hair, makeup, all that kind of stuff as well. We discussed that you're, you're into the modelling and that, that you would be open to going back into it. For you, what's your predominant focus at the moment? Oh, my focus on is getting these visuals done. I'm supposed to be shooting the open video soon. I'm just trying to lock down a couple locations and stuff like that, getting these girls in order and so forth and so forth. Because now you're on the other, the shoe's on the other foot, right? You used to be in hip hop videos as like supporting artists. And now you're the artist trying to get people to support you. How do you find managing other people to kind of do and adhere to your vision i go from i you know i know a lot of girls or whatnot i just hit them up on instagram hey i'm shooting a music video you want to support me or no <laughs> and most likely they do support if they're available they're there they see what i'm doing they respect it as long as you get their attention by respect like they're gonna you know mess with you and they don't even be asking for money i'd be so surprised i'd be like okay that's love right there period Hey, when you need to get your name out there, you need to get your name out there and any exposures. And there's people that really are admired by you, you know what I'm saying? And that's willing to help you. Especially because, you know, your your journey hasn't exactly been a simple journey. You've gone through quite a few ups and downs. You know, the first move out to LA, now you move to Miami, you're getting on a roll, then you have kids and then, you know, it's all, all the challenge. But the good thing is that it builds character and as you can see like i think for you right now even speaking to you versus and listening to your music i can see a different motivation it feels like right now you're as motivated as you've ever been probably yeah and you know what probably like before i had my son i used to be wanting to feel like how i feel now <laughs> and that was so crazy i used to be like how can i get to that point like because I felt like I felt like this before, but not so strong. But I, when I was doing my modeling thing, you know what I'm saying? Like I was doing the little gigs and stuff. I was really like feeling like, you know, uh, top notch video vixen, whatever you want to call it. But now I'm the artist me. So it's like, I'm starting to feel that again. And I thought I lost it. I thought I was never going to feel this, this way that I'm feeling now. And at what point do you think you lost it? Was there like a point where you were like, was it leaving LA? When I had was the it... baby. When I had got pregnant and had the baby. Like um, last, was it 2018? I had an opportunity to be on this reality show. Like I was doing some big shit. I could have been on Wild and Out. I could have did everything, but I got pregnant and uh, made me sick. I missed that on my interview. My homegirl ended up being chosen to be on that reality show. It was on VH1, um, Hustling Soul. 
I had an opportunity to actually be on the show, bruh. And I got pregnant and sick and missed out on my opportunity. And I missed out on the wild and out. It's because I don't know what happened to me around that era, but it was bad. I feel like the worst of the worst. My dad died that year. I'm sorry. It's just I was going through it. I don't know what happened, but I I thought that it was just over for me in my career, basically. And now I'm back at it again. Yeah, and I think, you know, the good thing that you are talking about it is that this is stuff that people don't talk about. You know what I mean? They There's so much in terms of the challenges in being an artist, but also the challenges in being a mother and being, you know, a strong female that we just don't get to see, especially as, as males who love this type of hip hop, it's important for us to also see the challenges that, you know, artists like yourself go through. It's a privilege for me to be able to try and understand and, and listen to the challenges that you have. It helps me understand, it helps your audience understand the, the music that you put out and kind of your journey that you've been on because the more we understand your journey, the more we, we understand music. Mm -hmm. Did you find that, you know, at getting in, you're at that point where, you know, mentally you're not strong, mentally you're struggling, you have the responsibility now of a, of a second child. What did you do to get yourself out of it? What did you do to recapture that motivation? You had that goal always, but what did you need to do to be like, all right, enough's enough? I don't know. Sometimes you really just have to change the people that's around you. I had cut everybody off and I just had to like really think it through like I gotta I had to cut them off so I could see my vision more clearer so when I cut them off I was able to see my vision more clear and that's how I was able to jump back on track because all those people and friends that was around me thought they was helping me they was just a distraction they weren't even trying to help me they were just negative people and just trying to use me just in case something might pop off period so I had to get rid of all those people <laughs> like seriously and how did you find that? How did you how did you realize that that was something that was happening? How did you realize and you know come to terms with the fact that you've got people in your life that aren't there to help you? I was just so tired of this person saying this about you, this person saying that about you, and this and that. I'm like, I gotta get rid of everybody. I just gotta get away from all these people. And I just that's what happened. Honestly, if people be like, how, because my friends ask me the same thing. How did you, what click? Like, what, how did you do it? How do you find this space and this energy? How do you do it? Like, I said, I just had to get away from people. <laughs> you don't understand how much negative, because they got stuff going on in their life, could really take a toll on your life too. It feels like you have now kind of gotten into a new stage where you're more accepting of who you are. Right. Yeah, that's true. Like, it just feels like you, even though, you know, when you're in, in your 20s, you weren't 100% sure, you still had a little bit of that holding you back. And it seems like now you don't have that there anymore. Because I didn't seem like a lot of people get on and stuff like that. I'm like, bruh, if they could get on, I know, like, I definitely get on, period. And once you experience around having friends that are, like, in the industry that's, you know, in the who's who's it makes you feel like damn you a part of that who's who's too because you know all these people period yeah so that's when i came to realize that i'm a little different like i'm an influencer for real like i really do this shit for real like once i realized that because you know i'm a little older now i see time flying by and i see what's going on so i'm more of aware i'm a whole lot more of aware well the good thing is that i think it's a blessing in disguise is that rather than getting into the game, you know, at 20 and not knowing who you are, you're now older, you've now had experience, you've now seen people around you, you can now make decisions that will help you rather than the other way around. I think when young artists get into it, they get over, they get too excited by the possibilities and they don't see the reality of you know, the industry, they don't see the reality of how yeah, it really and then is. when they get older, they be battling with whatever happened to them when they were younger because they, they was not aware. And it's just, yeah, it's mentally messes them up, mentally. So now I'm like mentally prepared. <laughs> and so how do you view the music industry right now? Because there's a lot of, a lot of things happening right now. You've got, you know, Britney Spears talking about 
how her record label and her managers are kind of holding her for ransom and, and over her music. How do you view that right now in terms of artists owning their own music but versus like distributing it through a label? When you're young, you don't know what you be signing and stuff like that. It's just, you want the glams. I don't know, like, I learned from that. That's why I was never really locked into no major label like that or anything, because I didn't heard stories about people locked in their contracts, they can't get out, then they get blackballed, and then all this, like, that's probably why I was afraid to ever sign with anybody or just any label, period, you know, because any independent label could actually be a famous label later down the line. You never know, you know what I'm saying? I look at situations like that. I don't know. She, that's just fucked up. A lot of record labels do that, though. They do that to their artists. And she's one of them. She's locked in her contract. Yeah, I think she's fighting to get some the rights back or something along those lines. But she's in the legal battle that's been going on for, for ages. That's I, what, that's what another thing about this industry scares me because of stuff like that. I don't, that's why I just, do my own thing. Wherever it leads me, that's where it leads me. Hopefully it'll be something big, hopefully. Well, I think that's why we're seeing independent artists more and more and more because you want ownership of what you want to do. You don't want to have, if you decide tomorrow that you don't want to have music out there, you can take it down. You know, you can do that kind of stuff. You're getting 100% of the royalties because you run the show versus... Right. I love running my own show. I really do. I love running my own show. And that's another thing. I wouldn't want to put all this time and effort into something I don't own. And it's my vocals, my everything, like really? And I can't own it? There's something's wrong with that. And the other challenge is, you know, you can do a whole album, but there are stories of recording labels not releasing albums because they don't think it's good enough, even though the artist spent, you know, a year doing a whole album and then it just sits gathering dust and then they get shelved and then nothing happens out of their career it happens to a lot of artists out there yeah i always like to finish off with one last question for everyone that i interview and it is really simply if you had to give one album recommendation other than yours that everybody should listen to at least once what album would that be um, dun, 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 dun. There's two of them. Hold on. Because there is this one album that I love so much. What is it called by Scorpion? Oh, yeah. Drake. Drake Scorpion album. I love that album. And the Carters by Beyonce and Jay-Z. I like that one, too. Which one? If you had to choose one, which one would you choose for someone to uh, listen to? you got to choose one. I know. I create the rules, but it's it's a tough question. Oh, my God. Okay, let's see. Of course, I give it to the Carters because that album is so bomb. That album is bomb. It's calm. It's relaxing. It gets you in the mood. And it just does some type of motivation to your mind. I love it. And you got the Queen, Beyonce on there as well, and Jay-Z, and Icon of Hip Hop. So I love that recommendation. So if you haven't checked it out, that's what Amelia Cole said it here first. Check it out. Um it's her recommendation for one album that everybody should listen to. Well, Amelia, I appreciate your time. It was it was busy for you, this schedule, going between doing your nails, looking after the kids, doing an interview, props to you. I can only do one thing at a time, so you can do three, four things at a time. So I appreciate you you coming on the show, um, and it would be awesome to, to see you do a tour out in Australia that way. You know, we could actually meet face to face as opposed that to that would be awesome let's make it happen let's do it we just need those borders to open up and then you can come come right down and i mean the good thing is down here in in australia the hip-hop scene is getting bigger we're getting local hip-hop artists that are that are coming up eminem has obviously toured he actually did a tour here with joe Co j cole kendrick came down as well as part of that tour action bronson comes down and we saw Royster Five Nine come down. So hopefully when all this madness ends, we can see you come down as well and, and do a tour. Yeah, that would be awesome. Well, before we finish up, I just wanted to, to plug, obvious, plug your stuff. So obviously everybody check out her new album. It just released 30 tracks. It is an absolute monster of an album, but it shows her journey through hip hop. It is classy bougie ratchet volume one it's her ep 
check it out. Um, came out 9th of June as well. So it's brand new. And you can check her out on Instagram as well. I am Amelia Cole. And is there anything else you wanted to plug? Anything else that you're working on for your fans? Um, you guys, I will be releasing new music soon. So just stay tuned. Um, yeah, like he said, go ahead and follow me on our IG. I am Amelia Cole. I'm always posting great content. And yeah, just stay tuned, period. <laughs> and you'll see everything she's working on. She posts all the time. And, you know, as she said, it's all about that vibe. Thanks for listening to the show. Please like, subscribe, and follow us on Instagram at the underscore slim fitty biggie committee. And stay tuned for our next podcast. Bye for now.